Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode of FaithWorks. I'm Wesley Singh and we'd like to welcome you to the program. If this is your very first time, I want to say thank you for tuning in. You want to grab yourself a notepad and a pen as we get into the Word and I'll be back with you shortly. Thank you. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 20, says, Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. When your assignment is unrecognized, you are uncelebrated. When you are not, where you, when you are not celebrated, then you are not rewarded. So if you solve problems, people will celebrate you and then reward you. You are created to solve problems. So those are two things I want you to kind of hook on your spirit. Number one, you are on assignment. You are here on the earth, not by chance, but on assignment. And you are a person that's created by God to solve problems. Say amen. Now, I'm going to give you some facts about your assignment, all right? So number one, here it goes. Number one, your assignment is always to a person or to a people. Your assignment is always to a person or to a people. In Jeremiah 1, 7, but the Lord said to me, do not say I am, I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I will send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. See, when we speak to God and God speaks back to us about our assignment, we have excuses. But God says, don't think that you're too young. Don't think that you're immature. Don't think that you are not qualified. Doesn't matter where I call you, I will give you the grace to speak. I'll give you the knowledge. I'll give you the skill. I'll give you the understanding. Say amen to that. Amen. So wherever you are, whether you're in corporate, and whether you're in the professional business, whether you're in government, where, wherever you are, God will give you the grace to be a light in that dark spot. Amen. Say amen to that. Number two, your assignment determines the sufferings and attacks you must encounter. Your assignment determines the sufferings and the attacks you must encounter. The bigger the assignment, the bigger the attacks. So don't be naive, church, because you're asking God to bless you, and as he blesses you, then the attacks grow, and then you think, oh, I don't want this. No, I'm teaching you now and showing you that the bigger the assignment, the bigger the attacks. For 2 Timothy 1.12 says, for this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and persuaded that he is able to keep what I've committed to him until that day. Say amen. amen. Number three, what grieves you is a clue to what you are assigned to heal and restore. Can I repeat that? What grieves you is a clue. Sometimes when you hear people speak, they are grieving. Um, you find people have compassion for poor people. There are some people have compassion for the homeless. And some people just love children's ministry. Some people love just being around business people. That is a clue. Uh, what grieves you is a clue to what you've been assigned to heal and restore. Compassion is always a signal to the place where you belong. What makes you cry is a clue to the problem God has qualified you to heal. The fourth point, what you love the most reveals the greatest gifts you contain. All of you have gifts. All of you have been gifted by God. Passion is a path to your wisdom. You'll only have wisdom for something you love. What you love to talk about, think about, learn about, that is your place, that is your assignment. Exodus 18 verses 13 to 14 says, And so it was on the next day that Moses sat, sat to judge the people, and the people stood before Moses from morning till evening. Although it was tiresome, but he loved it. That's what God called him for. And two, point number five. Your assignment is always geographical. Where you are matters as much as what you are. You might be a beautiful fish, but God help you if you're not in the water. So geogra geography matters. It controls the flow of favor in your life. 
Who sees you determines who will promote you. You will really receive favor unless someone sees you. Geography affects the increase of favor. You should go where you are celebrated. Say amen. Abraham left his father's house. God led him to go. Sometimes when God is leading us to meet new people and go to new places, we're afraid. But if they don't see you, they can't reward you. You'll never be recognized. Sixthly, you will only succeed when your assignment becomes an obsession. Paul had an uncommon achievement. Philippians 3 verse 13 to 14 says the following. It says, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forward to the things which are ahead. I press, say I press. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So you will only succeed when your assignment becomes an obsession. I trust that whatever assignment God has given you, it becomes an obsession. Point number seven, your assignment will require seasons of preparation. And we don't always like that. Seasons of preparation is important. Doctors are trained. Attorneys are trained. Pilots are trained. God help us if we get onto a plane where we have an untrained pilot. God help you if you are unleashed to people without training. See, behind the scenes, there's training. And when God is training you, don't throw up your arms and want to give up. He's training you. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved. You will experience it is a necessary path. It will happen in your walk with God. You will experience seasons of insignificance. You will experience isolation. I said it one time like this. I said, sometimes God will have to isolate you to insulate you. Because he can only insulate you when he isolates you. When he isolates you from amongst your peers, from amongst your friends, there's only one place you can look up. Joseph had only one place to look up when they threw him in the pit, and that was upwards. In your isolation, that's only one place you can look at is upwards to God. See, if you learn to walk on God, with God and call on God in those days of isolation, when he gives you a public platform, you'll still look to God. You will remember. You won't end up like Saul becoming arrogant. You'll be like David, a man after God's own heart. So these things are necessary. You will experience isolation. You will experience waiting. You'll experience warfare. You will experience persecution. You will experience injustice. You will experience silence. You will experience a lack of promotion. Jesus invested 30 years of preparation for three and a half years of ministry. If he was the son of God, and he learned obedience by the things he suffered. What about us? Unfortunately, today we're living in a society where we want it and we want it now. We get to the window and if we're not served within 59 seconds, we want it for free. No, it doesn't work like that in the economy of God. Point number eight, your assignment may be misunderstood by your own family and those closest to you. Jesus experienced this. He said in John 7, 5, for neither did his brethren believe in him. Brothers and sisters, in your life, as you're serving God and as you're going along in your assignment, your own brothers and your own sisters and siblings and family will come around and they won't believe in you. They'll misunderstand. But you, I encourage you, you press on. Always be aware of how different you are from others. God provides your family to prepare you for an enemy. God provides your family to prepare you for an enemy. Everything in your future is already, already in your present house. Your family is your school. Your family wants you humbled. Your enemy wants you destroyed. Your survival of your family is proof that you will survive your enemy and your future as well. Say amen to that. Amen. You will survive your enemy amen. and you will survive your future. If it's God before you, who can be against you? Point number nine, quickly, as I close, your assignment will always have an enemy. 
Don't look for a neutral point. Don't look for a neutral point. Because I think there's a misunderstanding when we become born again and come into a church, we think our problems are over. And we have been wrongly told by people leading us to Christ and says, if you accept Christ, that's the end of your problems. No, it's a beginning. <laughs> but it's worth it. Because you learn the wisdom of God, you learn the power of God, you learn to walk with God. Moses saw the power of God. Say amen to that. Joseph saw the power of God. See, I say about Joseph, they stole his coat. They couldn't steal his favor. See, people may steal your coat. They can never steal your favor. Amen. What God's given you is for you alone. Amen. If God's endorsed you, no man can subtract from your life. Amen. All they can do is throw up their arms and say, how did she do it? How did he do it? And what you don't want to do, brothers and sisters, it just is a caution. And I just want to throw this here. This is not a threat. This is a caution. Don't ever come up against a man and a woman that has the favor of God. Because the thing that they have that should be coming towards you starts to walk away from you. What you do not accept, you reject. What you do not accept, you unconsciously reject. What you criticize, you repel. So if you speak, you know, about a man's prosperity, if you speak about a man's or a woman's prosperity, you speak about, you know, somebody doing well with God, you're actually rejecting those things. Those things won't visit you. You've got to ce celebrate the promotion and success of others for you to experience success and promotion. It's God's law. It is God's law. What you sow is what you will reap. That's why we've got to be careful what we say. Be careful of our attitudes. Say amen. What you throw out is like a boomerang. It will always come back. So we've got to be careful what we throw out. Now, you know, I said to Pastor Zubeda the other day, I said, many times I do get cross because I have certain guidelines in my life and principles, and I get cross when people break them. I do. I'm a stickler for that. I am. But one thing I said to her, I said, I'm never bitter. I'm never bitter in my heart. I'm easy, quick to forgive, quick to let go, quick to recover. Do you understand? Your assignment will always have an enemy. Your friends provide comfort. Your enemies provide promotion. <laughs> your friends provide comfort. Your enemies provide promotion. That's why sometimes you have to walk away from the comfort of your friends and start to pray for your enemies because they are the ones that's busy promoting you. Had it not been for Goliath, where would David be? It was Goliath that made David famous. Enemies turn nobodies to somebodies. God will use your enemies to promote you. Say amen. amen. And my last point to you. Your assignment is the only place your financial provision is guaranteed. Oh, that is so big. Your assignment is the only place where your financial provision is guaranteed. I say this, and please let me take a minute just to kind of throw this out at you. And this is now bordering on stupidity. I say to people all the time, we are so conscious of the fact 
before we make a decision to go and eat, we choose a restaurant. Right? We choose what we will buy, what clothes we will wear. We choose where we will eat. And some people just don't have the little bit, you know, the extra brain power to choose what church they would go to. Most people that I have spoken to in my experience as a pastor, they will go to a church because they are feeling sorry for the pastor. <laughs> they do. They are feeling sorry for the pastor. Or they want to go there because it's poor people. No, it's a wrong way to look at it. I'm not criticizing the people where they are. I mean, that's why we got the gospel to preach to the poor. Say amen to that. So we give them direction, uplift them from their poverty, give them, you know, a better life. Let them come into Christ. Let them come into the, the ark so that they have an overflowing life, a life that overflows with abundance. But here's the point. You do not go and sit somewhere because you have chosen in your mind to sit there. Your life is an assignment. God directs you. Jesus said it like this. He says, I never do and I never say or do anything except I hear my heavenly father say or do. My life's an assignment. Your life is an assignment. You never sow on dry ground. You have a cousin that's been with you for 20 years and this cousin has been under financial pressure for the last 20 years and he's been breathing on you for the last 20 years and you're feeling sorry. You don't sow seed on arid ground. It's just the economy of the kingdom. You sow seed where God directs you to sow seed on good ground so it would yield a harvest. Come on here, somebody. So choosing where you go to church is important. Say amen to that. Your assignment is the only place your financial provision is guaranteed. God told Elijah to go to the brook where he was to be fed. God will tell you which brook to go to. And there you will be fed. Your pastor is your ceiling. <laughs> your pastor is your ceiling. If you go and place yourself under a pastor whose ceiling is low, that's where you're going. That is your future. Because you can't rise above your spiritual leader. Because every spiritual leader has a ceiling. The higher the ceiling, the higher you will rise. But you will not rise higher than your leader. See, the response that we normally have while walking out our assignment, he's a good man, he's a good pastor, he's a nice man. No, those are not the criteria to judge a man of God. The criteria to judge a man of God is that, or a woman of God is, are they walking with God? Are they experiencing the power of God? Is God with them? Is the hand of the Lord with them? Can I see it? Is it demonstrated? Can I see the power of God? I'm getting financial miracles because of that man. Come on here, somebody. Every person would need a prophet in their life. The Bible says, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. But believe in his prophets so you shall prosper. 2 Chronicles 20 verse 20. Your prosperity, ladies and gentlemen, is hooked up to your man of God. Amen. Not in your own way. <laughs> you know, I love God and I'll serve God. No, it's the principles of God. Your prosperity is hooked up to a man of God. Say amen to that. Amen. Hallelujah. So when the brook dried up, uh, he had to move. Why? Because his assignment changed. Lack is a clue that God is changing your assignment. His new assignment was to go to Zarephath. Here a starving woman would receive a financial miracle. So the last point is, your assignment is the only place your financial provision is guaranteed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you may be, may be going through a struggle now. You may be experiencing hardship now. But the issue is that if you're in the right place, God will cause the ravens to feed you. Amen. Oh, yeah, you'll get a miracle again and again and again and again. Don't ask me how. I don't know how. All I do know is that if you sit in the right place, if you're in the right 
geographical location, God will send you people after people to bring to you what needs to be done for your assignment to be completed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude with this last thought here. You can never expire until your assignment is completed. Let me repeat that again. You didn't really quite catch that. You can never, your life will never expire until your assignment's completed. Amen. Let me say it one more time. Your life will never expire until your assignment is completed. Amen. That means the devil has no right to take you out or touch you Amen. until God has finished with you. Amen. There's a lot of things that's going around us, you know, happening around us critical things, bad things, murderous things. But you know what? Your life is safe. Because your assignment is not yet completed. Amen. I want you to leave today knowing that God has blessed you, knowing that you have an assignment. Amen. And your assignment is not yet over. And for every assignment, every man and woman would need provision for the assignment. Amen. And God will send you the right people at the right time and connect you to grace and give you the provision for your assignment. Amen. No matter how big is your assignment or how small is your assignment, God will provide for your needs. Amen. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap. <laughs> Praise him. Hallelujah. Worship him. Now I want to conclude the service. The praise and worship can come up by saying the following to you. The Lord is with you. Amen. The Lord bless you. Yes. The Lord keep you. Yes. The Lord cause his face to shine on you. Yes. The Lord give you miracles upon miracles upon miracles upon miracles. I see God doing great and wonderful things for you. Let me share this with you. As you brought your tithes and offerings to the Lord this morning and as you've come to worship today, I declare and decree over your life better jobs, promotions and raises, bonuses and benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, blessed investment and income, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off and supernatural debt cancellation. I claim over you restoration. All that has been lost or stolen or delayed will come back to you. All overcharges by clerks or companies, all promises made that were not kept, double for your trouble. All real estate owned by your ancestors and the benefit of it. I claim a hundredfold return to your life. The wealth of the sinners to be released to the righteous. Mountains be removed and cast into the sea. Giants get out of your land. Devil, let go of your harvest. Money come into your hands. Prosperity come forth in the name of Jesus. I declare and decree as I bless you this morning, every one of your needs will be met. That you may increase to more than enough. To increase in your giving and increase in your receiving. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God. Say amen and amen. Now the blessing of the Lord, creator of heaven and earth, be upon you. And blessed be God who has delivered you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen and amen and amen. Well, I trust that that program was an absolute blessing to you. Now, if you've enjoyed that, please make sure to download our mobile application on your smartphone store. The details are on your screen. Also, log on to faithworks.tv. On there, you'll find programs. All of the broadcasts from the FaithWorks broadcast, you'll be able to find on that website. Together with that, you'll be able to sow a seed. You'll be able to partner with us. You'll be able to sign up for the Faith Chronicles on a monthly basis. Together with that, please send us your emails, your SMSs. Let us know what God is doing in your life. We love you. We care for you. And we would like to celebrate with you at what God is doing. Also, books are available at the Amazon store. So log on to Amazon if you'd like to use your iPads or other devices. Dr. Singh's books are available for sale. 
please log on and make sure to get yourself a copy. Well, from us to the Faithworks team, I'm Wesley Singh. We'll see you again next week.